You've knit some socks and now you have lots of scrappy bits of sock yarn left over. What are you going to do with all of those scraps? Well, I asked and the knitters answered. I asked them about their favorite scrappy projects to use up those sock yarn bits and they shared some great responses with me. So grab your knitting and a drink and let's settle in and talk about sock yarn scraps. Hey Nerdy Knitter, Tanya here. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a master hand knitter and the goal here at Nerdy Knitting is to help you become a more confident, adventurous knitter. And we've been chatting a lot about socks, all the different construction methods for cuff down socks, how to fit them properly, how to take care of them, and lots and lots of other things. And one of the things we haven't yet discussed is what to do with all of those scraps after you've knit those socks and you've got these little partially used balls of yarn left, what do you do with them? So I asked and you answered and you had some great responses. So we're going to talk about some great scrappy projects today. So one category was blankets. We're going to talk about them first and then we're going to talk about some other scrappy ideas as well. But I did want to talk about like if you have larger balls of sock yarn, then make a bag of them to use for like um, the contrasting heels and toes and cuffs. And when you have the small bits, then you can throw them aside for your scrappy projects. I do like to keep some of my larger leftovers on hand for those contrasting heels and toes and cups when you know you're going to want them. If you like to knit like short row heels and you want like that contrast heel, then it's a good idea to keep some of those leftovers for things like that. So um, I usually, I mean, I've always, I've got lots of leftovers. I don't have much of a stash. I, don't, I generally just buy yarn when I have a project in mind, unless it's sock yarn, I will buy a skein of sock yarn or dishcloth yarn and I keep those on hand. But when I finish a project, that's usually where I end up. I've got lots of scraps I have to use up. So I loved reading all of these ideas. And for me, most of my scraps end up either in this white box right behind me or a basket on the floor behind me. The larger amounts of leftovers will end up there because I'm a designer and I like to have lots of different yarn weights and yarn fibers, different blends of yarn on hand to try swatching for new designs and just deciding which like weight of yarn it would look good in or which fiber content would suit the design best. So a lot of my leftovers end up right there. But if they don't end up there, then they end up in one of two bags. One bag has all of my non fingering weight. So the DK, the sport and worsted mostly, uh, wool or animal based yarns because I'll knit scrap blankets with those. And I do like a worsted weight pattern. And then if it's like sport yarn, I'll just hold it double. It's a scrap blanket. So I don't have, to, I'm not so concerned about gauge. And then in the other bag is just specifically my sock yarn. And probably at some point, because I do have a lot of non sock yarn, fingering weight yarn usually it's like two ply wool that I use for color work but that usually ends up in its own bin as well because for a lot of color work you might just want like a little bit like one row for like some bright color or contrast or pop or something like that so those usually end up in my bin for color work projects so let's anyway let's get into the talk and see where I left off in this pattern I'm working on this sock and I've got to keep the knit two purl two pattern but it spirals around because it's a no heel sock this video is coming up next week but while I'm working on this let's talk about what you recommended for using up all of those scraps and the first category like I said was blankets and the first recommendation I'm going to give is a mitered square blanket classic pattern, lots of free patterns, lots of paid patterns online. The one I started with is uh, Kay Jones, the Bakery Bears, her Stitch in Time blanket, because I thought I would use it as a portable project. In hers, she has little nine by nine squares that you put a border around, and then you stitch them all together. So, I mean, hers, she had like one section for each of, of the months, I think is what, what it was. But when I ended up knitting mine, I ended up just doing one long strip, like nine squares wide. So I, I, it did not end up portable after all. It is just an at-home project. But there's something slightly addictive about knitting those little mitered squares. So I, I definitely recommend her pattern, especially if you want some vi video tutorials to walk you through how to do mitered squares. Because she has really great videos for that as well. But you'll find lots of patterns for them. And here's my mitered square blanket in progress right now. 
oops, that's the wrong side. Let's turn it around. I do like to weave in my ends as I go as well. So I don't have a bunch to do at the end. Like when I'm working, I think I've got nine squares in a row. So as I'm working them, I'm weaving in the ends. When I add on a new square, I weave in the end from the last square and the start of the yarn for that new square. So when I get to the end of the row, I just have one tail to weave in and I, t I weave in everything else. If I've forgotten to weave in anything as I went, then I do that one row before I start the next row. And as you can see, I've started my next row right here with that first one. So I have no rhyme or reason for picking, I'm picking colors, I'm just using up my scraps. This is probably just gonna end up probably right on the back of my chair so I can grab a blanket. Sometimes it's chilly here in the morning. So something that I can just grab to throw on. So this is all sock yarn, so super wash. So it's easy to care for. And well, of course you can use whatever yarn you want for a mitered square, but sock yarn is great for just these little mitered, these little squares don't take much yarn. So your littlest of bits, even if you don't have enough for a square, I ended up using two colors there on this one. So it looks a little bit like an egg. I ran out of the speckled color. So I just finished the square with this other color. So very easy to use up like your self stripings, your variegated, your solids just a fun way to use up all of those little bits of yarn. And I'm not the only one working on a mitered square blanket. Janie is also working on one. And Sarah also mentioned a mitered square blanket in her comment. Anything too small to make blanket squares or dolly clothes. She has a little bunny that she has, she makes clothes for, which I think is adorable. The, all of the rest of it goes into a jar to become stuffing, which is another great way to use up those tiny bits of scraps. And something I saw on Instagram the other day, for anybody who does, if you like all the fiber arts, I've just started a little bit of spinning. So I started following some spinning things on Instagram and I saw one where somebody used a blending board and they used up their little scrappy bits. They stuck it on the board and you sort of brush it in to make like a new bit of fiber that you can spin. So even the little bits of leftover yarn, you can spin again to use for another project. Now there are plenty of mitered square patterns. I will link the one I use down below. Of course, mine looks nothing like her pattern, but it's easy to modify once you know how to add each square. It's very easy to just do the little nine patch sizes like she does in the pattern or just do a long strip and then just keep adding to it. Um, but there are other free patterns or paid patterns that you can find. Just do a search on Ravelry and you'll find even more on there. Now to continue our discussion about blankets, Emma recommends the Battenberg crochet blanket. So I am putting crochet in here too. I know some of the knitters just knit, but there are some who probably crochet. I've started doing a little bit. One of my blanket projects is crocheted squares. It's with worsted weight yarn, using up all my little scraps there. But um, crochet granny squares or those little tiny squares are a great way to use up your yarn as well. So I wanted to put that in here for those knitters who also like to crochet. And scrappy crochet projects are really a great way to use up your leftovers. So this particular crochet blanket, the Battenberg crochet blanket, it's these cute little crochet squares. And I love how she has mixed the colors with the white or the cream. So it's just a really lovely combination of colors and also has a very decorative or pretty decorative border. And she has some video tutorials as well, one for making the squares themselves and then another one for how you should join them all together when you're ready to do your blanket. And then Darlene also mentions that she likes to do striped or crocheted granny squares. I've only done the squ squares at this point, but I do know that a lot of people also like to do this the strips, like you do like a crochet, I don't even know, some pretty special stitch. You do one long row in one color and then you switch colors and do another long row. I've never done one of those, but that's another way to use up your little scrappy bits is with a crochet strip blanket, not squares. Okay, so that's it for crochet talk. Now let's get back to the knitting patterns and another one that Flat Battery, recommend, Flat Battery Makes recommends is the Hexapuff quilt, which is also on my list probably after I finish my mitered square blanket. Or if I'm honest, when I get bored with adding mitered squares, I might start that and then I'll just have two projects in this bag. I just have this clear tote from Knit Picks and all of the yarn is divided up into two little Ziplocs. And then I've just got the, the blanket sitting in there that I'm working on. But truth be told, if I get sick of that, then I might just get the Hexy Puffs, the, or it's really called, what is it? The Beekeeper's Quilt from Tiny Owl Knits. 
that's the name of the pattern. I'll put a link down below for that as well. But that's my thought is when I get tired of adding to the mitered square blanket, I'm just going to set it aside and I'll get this other pattern and start knitting these just tiny little hexapuffs is what they are. You can stuff them. You don't have to stuff them. They're just these little hexagons and you just, they're knitting the round and they're very portable because they're these tiny little projects. So I think that's something since my mitered square blanket did not end up being portable since I just kept going with the length of it. I might get this one to have like sort of my portable project. I do have granny square bag in my purse that I've been using right now, but maybe for something different. When I'm tired of the mitered squares, I'm going to get this pattern and I'll start making some hexapuffs as well. And then when you get enough, you join them all together. I think the pattern will probably tell you how to do that as well. I think there's a few different options for joining them. And then you can make your blanket whatever size that you want. So those little hexagons are a great way to use up those leftover bits of yarn too. And then one more blanket recommendation, not from a viewer, but just some another one that's on my list is the Jelly Roll Blanket by Kay Jones, another one from the Bakery Bears. This one is like just long strip. Well, if you've ever seen like the quilting fabric, it's sort of that idea where you join them as you go and you just keep using one color of yarn till you run out and then you start the next color. And it just looks like a different, just another different type of scrappy blanket that you can just keep adding onto as you go. So link for that down below as well. Oh, and I did want to say this one also has four video tutorials. So it walks you through all of the techniques to knit this one. And she does say it's beginner friendly. So if you are a newish knitter and you have a scrap, you have enough scrap, enough scrap yarn to get started with a blanket, then this might be one to consider. So those are all the blanket ideas, but I just wanted to go through the comments and I really shouldn't be doing a knit two purl two pattern right now because I have to keep paying attention to this, try to talk to you at the same time. But anyway, I want to go through all of the other comments and just see what everybody else had to say about scrappy projects that aren't blankets. And the first one was from Candy Kate. She is collecting to make a large Fair Isle scarf. That is a fabulous idea. I actually have one that I started and I just kept it on waist yarn. This was for a vest that I knit, a Fair Isle vest. It was a craftsy class. I will try to remember to look for it and put a link for this down below. And um, I wanted to test out my colors because I wanted more, I wanted some bright colors, but I didn't want it to be like, whoo, explosion of bright. Um, so I figured I was going to do a big enough swatch that it could be a scarf eventually because I mean this was the swatch for one project and then next time I do a fair L garment I think this was in DK weight yarn might be sport I'm not sure but um I think I would I wouldn't really for a scarf I think any DK weight or sport I would just pick up the stitches right now they're just on waist yarn right around the top and then cast on if I have another fair L project I want to swatch for and do another section on here for that up that project and then I can use that for my gauge measurements and also keep adding on to this what will be eventually when it's long enough it'll be a long time because I don't do a ton of fair isle um but it will eventually be a scarf and I mean I there's no way there I can't reuse this yarn you know because I mean it's stranded knitting long not long just short pieces of yarn if I didn't carry it up then they're very short so there's no point in ripping it out to use the yarn for something else and it is very pretty so I thought I'm just going to keep it and then next time I'm working on a feral project I can just slip this right back onto whatever needle size I want to test and then just knit my swatch right on here now it's knit in the round because I usually do fair isle stranded knitting in the round I don't like to do it flat I think I've tried it once flat and I hated it so I haven't really attempted it since but then yeah I can just keep adding on to this it just sits in my scrap basket behind me and it's just there and then maybe someday I'll have enough I'll have knit enough feral garments to have made a whole scarf but um, I'm not the only one who thought of this Candy Kate did as well then Melissa mentions dice bags, which I think is great. Like she says, if you have gaming friends who have a lot of games that use a lot of dice, then those are a great way to use up scraps. And now I'm thinking about knitting some because we, we've been pulling out, maybe because it's winter, we've been pulling out a lot of games for something to do because it's cold and eh, I don't like, 
I don't get out as much for my walks and things in the winter because, I mean, we live in a little subdivision. Sometimes it's not plowed very well, so the roads are icy and I don't want to be slipping down the road. So the roads are clearer now, but it's really cold and icky today. So no walk probably. But anyway, <laughs> all that to say, yes, we've been spending more time just sort of playing board games and card games and things like that. So I like this idea of dice bags. And then Katie Ryan also mentioned potpourri bags, which is another great way. I was thinking also like whatever scents are good for keeping away um, moths with your knitting things. You could make little sachets put some potpourri in there and then maybe a couple drops of essential oil. I think cedarwood is one of them, maybe lavender. And they'll, your clothes will smell lovely and it will keep the moths away. Don't quote me, I'm not sure which essential oils will work for moths, but I like that idea anyway. And then Lauren, she mentions a hat. It's called the Full of Minis hat. And this is an adorable hat. It uses um, 24, I think, like an advent calendar set of mini skeins. So it's it got this really cool welting effect. I'll put some pictures here so you can see it, but you do like a certain number of rounds in your one color. And then there it's sort of folded and stitches are picked up to do the next color. So you get this, you get the color, but it's not just stripes. You've got this texture from the welting pattern as well. It's not like built in texture, like seed stitch, but just the texture of folding and picking up stitches adds just something really kind of interesting about this. So this pattern also includes tutorials for creating the folds and picking up stitches. So some hand holding here for those who are curious but aren't quite sure if they can tackle that. So I always like it when people inc include video tutorials for different techniques. I think that's just a great addition to the pattern. Okay, and then the next comment from Mary. She puts strands together for heavier weight yarn and she knits neck warmers and triangle shawls. And of course she mentions DK weight, but it'll work for fingering weight too. I'm not sure. <clears throat> how many strands of yarn you want to hold together but it is something you can try and then flat battery she mentions pom-pom garlands and that would be really cute now she's got me thinking about that i think it might be cute to make one and sort of string it across the bookshelf behind me that could be fun maybe i'll do something like that and then masuga she mentions christmas ornaments home decor a star of david applique pins so lots of great little ideas for using up those leftovers. And Nefriel, she mentions pairing leftovers with full skeins to, and her plan is to make Stephen West's Marled Magic shawl. So I'll put a picture of that here. It's a very colorful shawl and you've got lots going on. You're marling your colors, so you're carrying two different colors together to get like this sort of a gradient effect or different colored effects. There's also eyelets, there's seed stitch, there's garter stitch, there's brioche. So there's a lot going on in this pattern. And the comment that he has with it is each section is like a mini project keeping you entertained throughout the entire shawl. So if you like a lot of different texture and stitch patterns in within one project, then definitely check out that, um, what's it called, Marled Magic. Then Zizi mentions that her grandma used to make big Christmas stockings. And I think that is a sweet idea, especially if you like the idea of like, sort of like a memory stocking or a memory blanket, you can remember what each of those skeins of yarn were for, then that would be a sweet way to remember them. I think that would be cool if you did like, say you had a baby and you've got like all the leftover yarn from doing your baby knits, you could do like a, a Christmas stocking for your child that uses all the yarn from all those projects, just sweet ways to use. I just think I like those thoughtful memory ways to use leftover yarns. And then another one, colorful dolls and teddies of small little amigurumi and little, not sure if fingering weight yarn for amigurumi now that I'm thinking about it, but other small dolls and things, definitely fingering weight yarn would work. And then we had a bunch of people also mention scrappy socks. Um, Janie mentions them and also has plans for a scrappy sweater. Cynthia, she's planning scrappy socks. And then FRI, she mentioned scrappy socks and ruffles on her socks. I've done a couple pairs of socks with ruffles. They're a bit tedious to do because it's a lot of stitches, but they're so cute. And I love the idea of using up some leftovers just for the ruffle. So you get like a fun contrasting color. That is a really great idea. And then Ushi mentioned striped socks for her kids. So that is a lot of great ideas for using up 
those stripy or not stripy those scrappy bits of leftover yarn and I'm sure you have more ideas that you could share as well for using up those so leave a comment with them down below I did want to mention one more thing a few people mentioned you making a magic ball of yarn if you have lots of different bits I've never made one but I would think that you'd want like you could have short lengths maybe anywhere from like I don't know six inches to a foot to a couple of feet even those types and what you do is you just knot the ends together using a magic knot I'll put a link down below for how to do that um, my only concern is I'm always concerned that knots will come out so I would leave when you make the magic knot just leave the tails and then when you're knitting with it knit with the tail as well and just sort of weave it in as you go like you're knitting it in so you don't have to weave it in later and that just sort of adds a little layer of protection but there's lots of tutorials online for making one of these it's basically just taking all of those little bits and knotting them the ends together and then putting it in a ball so you have like your own scrappy ball of yarn ready to knit with and it's not lots of just random pieces that you have to pick out one and then knit it in pick out the other and you've got all these ends to weave and what you're doing is knotting them all together so they're all just ready to keep knitting right from that ball of yarn and I really liked Raya's comment if you have lots of different colors she talks about doing a ball that's just all different shades of green so you could do like a multicolor ball or if you've got the different colors you could split them up and then just do one ball that's specifically one shade you know just are all the greens or all the blues or whatever I just thought that was really great there are probably a lot more ways to use up your scrappy bits of yarn that we haven't even talked about and if you'd like to talk about them be sure to leave a comment down below and share your recommendations for using up those scrappy yarns or your pattern ideas or recommendations as well if you're looking for more scrappy ideas go down and check out those comments to see what other knitters are talking about and if you're looking for more stash busting ideas be sure to check out this video right here and i'll see you in the next video